Welcome everyone to the 2020 virtual global conference for NCDA. Um, it is uh, our privilege to be presenting on the NCDA credentials. And uh, for this presentation, we just want to go over some of the, the main topics and main points for um, the NCDA credentialing initiative and um, just talk about how we believe the credentials can support your professional brand and offer increased um, confidence uh, from your clients and students uh, and also promote uh, formal credentialing for career development professionals uh, in our industry, in our field. The credentialing initiative now consists of six distinct certifications and uh, we've offered this uh, infographic as what we believe to be um, just a nice visual representation of those offerings and we want uh, individuals who are reviewing their credentials and considering pursuing a credential to uh, see uh, our program as a way that they can grow as a professional and continue to reinforce their professional brand. So we have the Certified Career Counselor, we have the Certified Master of Career Services, the Certified Career Services Professional, um, we have the Certified Clinical Supervisor of Career Counseling, the Certified Career Counseling Educator, and our newest credential, the Certified School Career Development Advisor. Just to quickly review today's agenda, we want to be presenting information that touches upon some of the common questions that we encounter here at the Credentialing Commission. Um, from uh, membership and from interested parties who are researching uh, the credentialing offerings. We want to share some of our stories and then also speak to some of the, uh, some of the recent information that came out of uh, a member survey that was launched by NCDA uh, this past June to gather uh, member feedback uh, regarding the credentialing initiative and any ongoing questions and concerns. One of the first you know, areas that we want to discuss is essentially the, from the applicant's viewpoint, what's in it for me? Uh, so why should an individual consider pursuing a credential? What uh, NCDA has believed for many years and is now um, fully supporting with the credentialing initiative is that the field of career development uh, deserves its own unique uh, credentialing system where counselors, coaches, advisors, consultants uh, can look to NCDA for leadership, advocacy, research, best practices, and now for competency-based credentials. Uh, essentially, what are the benefits of an NCDA credential? Or if you consider what is the value of pursuing an NCDA credential, this is where um, one of our, uh, one of the members on our board <clears throat> made the statement that um, this is NCDA's opportunity to essentially uh, you know, put our flag in the ground and say, uh, we are a very important, very uh, necessary and unique sector. And with that approach, we deserve to be recognized with our own credentials, similar to professional counselors and school counselors, addiction counselors, marriage and family counselors, um, workforce development folks uh, who have looked to NCDA uh, for years for the facilitating career development um, training program. So the credentialing initiative is now an extension of 
uh, all of the past efforts from NCDA to create a program that members can be confident in, in terms of the strength and the research and the competency behind their credentials. And it'll also um, support the delivery of career development services to the public at large. James, why don't you uh, speak to some of these uh, these next slides? And and I apologize for I forgot to introduce all of our folks. We have I am John Long. Uh, I am the uh, current chair of the NCDA Credentialing Commission. I have been with the Credentialing Initiative since 2016. Uh, James Westoff is our chair elect, uh, and James moved into that role uh, this past year uh, after serving as the uh, the main commission member representing the certified career counselor uh, designation or i'm sorry credential and uh, wendy wilson is the member of the credentialing commission who has been representing and further developing the certified career services provider credential james go ahead and Kind of take over here and just let me know when you want to change the slides. Thanks so much, John. Again, my name is James Westhoff and I'm the chair elect uh, for the, the Credential Commission and I've been on the commission uh, since 2017. Um, it is definitely a commitment to choose to do a credential. Um, it is that we feel it is incredibly important to be competency based and it is a strong certification, in my opinion, where you can lead the way based on NCDA research and, um, the, and, and, and having something that you can show your clients that you have the competency to do the work that you're doing. And it's based on NCDA research and standards and practice. Um, I encourage you, so, I feel like making this commitment um, when I showed this to my dean who's my boss um, I was able to show her that this was going to be a competency based I was going to have to show what I know and she really connected to it and has given me more uh, projects and more collaborations I think it's helped me in a sense um, make connections on a wider basis in NCDA as well. Um, I think it can help you for your chances for jobs, possible promotions, um, contracts, things like that. It is a competency base. And one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is I encourage you, don't be scared of the competency base, the, the questions that you have to answer. When a, before I took the scenarios um, and did that portion of the, the credential, I was really, really nervous. I've got to admit, I was extremely nervous. I, I was like, oh, do I really want to do this? Do I really know my stuff? And once I started studying for it, so what I encourage you, we've put together really good study guides. And I really think that's all that's really what you need to study and it will give you a sense of how to take the scenarios. Um, and it's really proving what you already know. Um, and I think the reason that these competency-based uh, credentials are so important is that the, the previous de designations that NCDA developed, the master career counselor, those were just chosen by the person and there was nothing behind them to prove the competency of attaining it. Um, so that's why I think these, these credentials are so important. Um, so, uh, so and, and I think you're taking a lead um, through the NCDA and th through proving what you can do to work with your clients and, and work in, in your profession, so. Thank you, James. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> consistently um, comes up, one of the concerns or one of the questions 
uh, that we kind of field here on a consistent basis at the Credentialing Commission and uh, at uh, NCDA's home office is um, why did NCDA feel the need to develop these credentials? So uh, as, I, as I mentioned briefly, I have been a member of the credentialing initiative since day one when it was a presidential task force in uh, spring of 2016, just kind of investigating uh, the possibility of moving into the, the formal uh, realm of offering uh, professional certifications. And at that time, we had seen this kind of evolution of designations. Now, we use the term designation because there was no formal um, competency based tool or instrument used uh, for an individual to earn a designation. It was simply an application. In the beginning, it was an application um, showing that you were either functioning as a you know, career counselor or you were functioning as a um, career specialist, as we were calling them, individuals who were serving as coaches, advisors, and consultants. Um, and there was really uh, no formal, there were really no formal standards behind those designations and they were certainly not competency based. Uh, and for many years, NCDA just didn't feel that they had the resources to move into the formal credentialing space. <clears throat> so uh, the exploratory uh, task force uh, did their work in spring and summer, fall of 2016, and then the NCDA um, executive board, board of directors, uh, voted to uh, formally create the Credentialing Commission in January of 2017, and the NCDA credentials were born at that point. So we are now um, in our fourth year of formal operations as a Credentialing Commission, uh, and we also have our first group of individuals who were credentialed in 2000, uh, early 2017, have come up for uh, the three-year renewal period of their credentials. How many people are credentialed right now? This is the exciting, uh, the exciting point that we now have over 1,700 people who hold an NCDA credential, and uh, these credentials are global credentials. Uh, we have individuals in the U.S. and, and multiple countries around the globe who have earned an NCDA credential. And that number uh, increases uh, each month. So uh, we've, we've had a really nice response from our membership and interested parties um, in uh, areas across the globe. I want to talk uh, about some of the, the wins uh, for career practitioners. So essentially the ongoing accomplishments of the Credentialing Commission, and again, going into our fourth year of operations as a formal um, credentialing body. Um, <clears throat> we Just this year, we announced that uh, individuals who graduated uh, or are graduating from a KCREP approved career counseling program, of which there are, I believe there are five uh, nationwide at this point. Uh, so individuals that are uh, graduating or have graduated from a KCREP approved career counseling program um, have the opportunity to fast track into the uh, certified career counselor program based on the depth and quality of their instruction in that KCREP career counseling program. So uh, that will be uh, an ongoing uh, fast track opportunity for these individuals uh, that are graduating from these programs. The Certified School Career Development Advisor, our newest credential, uh, came out of uh, the pilot phase in fall of 2019 and, and went into full operation in 2020. 
So we have a growing number of individuals who uh, are pursuing this credential to support their work in the K through 12 sector. And, you know, we see this credential as um, someone who can partner with um, school psychologists and school counselors to offer um, support and program um, work uh, in conjunction with the counselors and, and uh, school psychologists, recognizing that there are so many areas for counselors and psychologists to be responsible for in the K through 12 sector. So this is an opportunity for uh, schools and school districts to designate uh, an individual to serve as this uh, career development advisor and use this new credential to support uh, that role. The Certified School Career Development Advisor is built upon, uh, the core is built upon the facilitating career development curriculum, and then three additional modules have been added that are specific to the K through 12 sector and uh, uh, the uh, workforce and school to work um, opportunities or school to, to um, higher ed opportunities uh, that exists for um, individuals who are graduating um, <clears throat> in their senior year of high school. So while well, planning for those next steps after high school is an important uh, part of uh, this individual's role as a sort of certified school career development advisor. Um, the credential program migrated to an enhanced digital platform for our application system um, in January of this year. And you may have noticed that uh, the credentials were kind of uh, closed for several weeks uh, while we migrated to uh, a new platform. Um, it is offered by SurveyMonkey um, that uh, I'm sure that you've you've heard of and you know, and SurveyMonkey um, uh, launched their uh, new platform called SM Apply, which is used for uh, professional associations that are offering credentials and scholarship organizations. So um, we are excited about the enhanced features uh, of the SM Apply platform, and uh, we are working out some of those bugs as we go along because we've only been using it for a few months now, um, but we're already noticing that we've got uh, much more enhanced capabilities and um, we've got the backing of SurveyMonkey for that, that uh, technology piece. Um, the commission has been able to solidify several uh, agreements with some global partners. Uh, to offer a uh, alternative pathway, primarily for the Certified Career Services Provider cred credential. Um, organizations such as Mindler, uh, that is offering a career coaching credential uh, in India. Uh, these individuals, as they complete the Mindler program, uh, they are also eligible to uh, apply for the CCSP credentials. So we have several of these kind of um, global partnerships and alternative pathways that are underway right now and uh, very pleased with the progress of those global partnerships. Um, 2020 definitely um, marks the, the year when uh, we have the uh, the original credential holders from who, who earned the credential in 2020, many of those individuals participating in the pilot programs that were run for each of the credentials. Um, <clears throat> so 2020, uh, spring, spring and summer of 2020 marks the end of their initial three year credentialing period and they are now um, being taken through the process to renew their credential for an additional three-year period. And with that, we have introduced more information on the website regarding continuing education opportunities uh, and guidelines and policies uh, from NCDA, and these apply to 
individuals who need to earn those 30 continuing education contact hours to renew their credential for an additional three year period. So uh, this year we've started that process of renewals and auditing, uh, random auditing of credential holders so that we can uh, support the quality initiative behind our credentials. Um, this year also marks a, uh, the start of, an, of a really uh, exciting initiative that uh, we at the Credentialing Commission and the NCDA, the Board of Directors, have really gotten behind in terms of uh, outreach to the higher education sector. So we want to be um, connecting with and promoting, advancing knowledge, understanding among um, student services, career services, individuals at our colleges and universities across the country uh, to make them aware of the value of an NCDA credential and more importantly, the value of having a staff member who holds an NCDA credential. Um, and the fact that these are competency-based credentials that are earned, they are not designations that are simply awarded, and um, we will be continuing that outreach for the remainder of 2020 uh, to reach the student services and career services staff uh, <clears throat> in our universities and certainly being able to build off the higher education membership at NCDA to uh, just increase awareness and discussion and um, some, some increased, um, hopefully increased activities surrounding the process of uh, qualifying for a credential and eventually earning a credential. Um, we, in the, in the initial three-year period, we conducted uh, one quality uh, assurance process where we looked at uh, validity and reliability uh, of our uh, competency-based assessment process. We looked at the quality of the application process itself. Um, we uh, examined the ongoing steps required to secure um, blind review of applications so there was uh, so that we can eliminate uh, any type of bias in the assessment process so uh, this year also marks um, a new uh, a new period where we will be uh, doing a second quality review Dr. Tina Enkdal um, was on the commission. Um, she will be heading up that uh, second quality assurance uh, review process. The NCDA board has embarked on a, a new multi-year strategic plan as uh, one of their major uh, tasks for uh, the 2020-2021 uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, fiscal year at NCDA, and um, they have asked the Credential Commission to participate in that strategic initiative and offer information uh, to the board uh, to be infused into the strategic plan. So we're excited about those ongoing conversations with the board to further enhance and um, solidify the credentialing initiative. Um, the, since the days um, when, in 2016, when, the, when we were simply a presidential task force um, and now entering our fourth year as a formal credentialing commission, we have um, had very strong uh, relationships with the NCDA executive board. A member of the executive board has uh, consistently served as a liaison to the Credentialing Commission and uh, this year we are also um, kind of increasing <clears throat> the connections that we have, the, the Commission is increasing the connections that uh, we have with other 
entities at NCDA's other committees, such as the, um, the uh, Training and Education Committee, the Ethics Committee, um, the Diversity uh, Initiatives and Cultural Inclusion Committee. So we're looking for ways to engage those cross-functional uh, uh, partnerships across NCDA to again strengthen the credentialing initiative and increase awareness surrounding the credentialing initiative. And um, another uh, point that is so important uh, that we stress is that uh, the credentialing initiative would be nowhere without uh, the, the members of NCDA who have graciously volunteered to serve as reviewers uh, for uh, the credentials, starting with the pilot programs back in uh, <clears throat> 2017 and to today, uh, going into our fourth year of formal operations, we have consistently been able to rely on volunteers to serve as reviewers for each of our credentials, and they have done a tremendous job. Uh, for us and their contribution to this initiative, their contribution to our industry um, is invaluable, uh, certainly from this perspective. So we want to uh, continue to give a shout out to those volunteers and those reviewers. How do these credentials compare to um, other credentials that are out there in the industry? NCDA recognizes that um, there are a variety of credentials out there for individuals to pursue. And <clears throat> they come from, uh, a, from various uh, professional bodies, various fields such as counseling, coaching, resume writing, uh, career development. Um, what we are saying is that we have, we at NCBA and the commission have put our focus and our energy into building truly competency-based credentials so that uh, in earning one of these certifications, you feel very confident that you have the skills, the knowledge, the experience, uh, the working uh, capabilities uh, to utilize the, the skills and competencies associated with um, your credential. <clears throat> From a true cost comparison, we uh, offer credentials at a very low price when you compare the investment uh, that is being requested by other organizations, whether it be counseling organizations or coaching organizations like the International Coach Federation. Um, we have intentionally focused on making our credentials reasonable uh, for uh, all of our members, whether they serve in workforce development agencies or they're working for you know, one of the top universities in the country. So we have been very aware uh, of the investment that is necessary on the part of the public and our members. Uh, in continuing to offer cost-effective certifications. Um, <clears throat> what about continuing education? As I said, this year we have launched uh, a refreshed version of our continuing education manual. So it's the second edition, uh, which went into effect in April. And uh, the continuing education manual and the continuing education log sheet are available on the NCDA website under the continuing education tabs. So you can um, look at the cont continuing education model um, that is promoted in the manual and see that we have been um, very liberal in um, the types of activities, intentionally liberal and uh, accepting in terms of the type of um, activities that will count toward continuing education contact hours. We are not trying to restrict uh, the type of activities. We are trying to encourage uh, a, an array of activities that continue to support and advance our work 
uh, in this industry in collaboration with multiple cousin organizations that we know are out there and, and doing uh, very nice work as well. And again, uh, we just want folks to um, understand that there are a variety of credentials that they can choose from, from both the practitioner um, point of view and from the academic uh, perspective if you're serving as a supervisor or an educator. Um, Wendy, why don't you speak to um, some of these additional topics? Great. I'll be glad to, John. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be with you today. Um, so some of you might be asking, so what does this process look like? How long will it take for me to get a credential? Um, what do you mean when you talk about the peer review process? And then how do I maintain my credential? So these might be questions that you would raise. So let's um, talk about this a little bit. In, in terms of time to obtain a credential, once you have selected the credential you want to apply for, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, um, and submit your application and pay the, uh, as John noted, uh, the very reasonable fee for that, you should get a response within about two weeks um, regarding your application. And then the next step will be for you to complete the assessment portion where you have the chance to demonstrate your competencies through case studies. And um, you, you have uh, 90 days to complete that application process. So you have some time to um, work your way through it and um, feel comfortable and confident in the completion of that process. And then once you have completed your case studies, those will be reviewed by those peer reviewers. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, process. As John said, um, we have a number of volunteers who are part of our peer reviewers um, and who are folks who are themselves credential holders and they work in a variety of career settings and have a range of experience um, in numerous career settings. So those are folks who review the assessments that you complete, um, the case studies that you complete, and um, say yes this person has demonstrated this competency or no here's an area where we want a little additional information so should you have one of the case studies that you do not successfully complete you do have an opportunity to retake that um, so there is that element as well um, and then once you've received your credential, you may be asking, how do I maintain that? There is an annual fee, and again, we think it's a very, an, a very affordable fee um, to maintain your credential. So you'll receive a notice each year to submit your annual renewal fee. And then every three years, you will submit information regarding your continuing education. Um, 30 contact hours are required during each three-year period. And as John mentioned, um, there is information on the website. We have a um, sort of handy tool or guide for you about um, education, continuing education that is available for you uh, that will help you maintain your credential. And it does include a variety of activities. So just looking at the specifics of this, the first step is choosing a credential that works for you and that fits your professional brand. And we'll take a little bit closer look at this in just a minute on a couple of the upcoming slides. But once you have selected the credential that you want to apply for, then you go ahead and pay the fee and submit your application for that. Um, then you prepare for your assessment. And I think James and John have mentioned that we have some great comprehensive guides on the NCDA website that can help you prepare for your assessment. And then as you are completing those case studies, that's your opportunity to demonstrate your knowledge and to validate the work that you've done already um, 
by showing the competency that you have in your chosen area. And then those are reviewed through that blind assessment process that we've talked about. Um, once you've completed that successfully, then you will receive your credential and you can use that to um, demonstrate to your clients and customers that you work with as well as to your uh, supervisors and colleagues that you have this knowledge and have um, an appropriate credential for for your work setting. So which credential is right for each person? How do you go about choosing that and making that selection? And then what support is available to you and who can you talk to about these circumstances? Um, we'll talk in just a second about the role that you might play in the career development field and that will help you make a selection about the credential itself. As we mentioned, there are study guides available to you on the NCDA website. You can also find information on the NCDA website about training programs that might help you prepare for some of the specific credentials, as well as continuing education. We have a group of select providers that offer continuing education, and so that is available to you as well on the NCDA website. In addition, the Credentialing Commission serves as a resource for you. Um, each of the credentials has um, is represented by a commissioner, a member of the Credentialing Commission, who has knowledge about that specific credential. And so that person is always a resource for you. You can find uh, the listing of the Credentialing Commissioners on the NCDA website, um, as well as see who represents which credential. And so you can contact those individuals. You can talk with us if you have a particular question and uh, need some additional information to help you in this process. So as you're thinking about what credential you want to pursue, which one is right for you, you may want to give some thought to the role you currently play or the role you plan to play in the career development field. For folks who are uh, direct practitioners and working in um, workforce development or other career advising fields, you may want to look at the Certified Career Services Provider. Uh, this particular credential does not have specific educational requirements or um, minimum years of experience. Um, it does require that you complete the facilitating career development training, which is available through NCDA. But it's a great credential for folks from an array of backgrounds to deliver services and demonstrate core competency in the field of career services. The CMCS, the Certified Master of Career Services, is for practitioners um, working in a variety of fields, including advising, coaching, and consulting. Um, in order to qualify for this particular credential, you do need a minimum of a bachelor's degree um, in any major and five to seven years of experience in the field. The CCC, or Certified Career Counselor, is specifically for individuals who hold uh, master's degrees in counseling or related fields and also have specialized in career development and are providing uh, career counseling services. So individuals who might be working um, in a variety of career counseling settings and have this particular educational background will benefit from the CCC. Uh, John mentioned earlier that our newest credential is the CSCDA, the Certified School, uh, excuse me, Certified School Career Development Advisor, and that's for educators, career educators working in K through 12 that work directly with students or who work in a process to help design and coordinate school and community-based efforts. Uh, individuals might work with other staff to coordinate these activities um, and to implement a variety of efforts to improve the opportunities for students um, to uh, learn about the job market and gain the skills and knowledge that they need to be competitive. 
we also have the CCCE and the CCSCC, and as John mentioned earlier, these are credentials for folks who are um, um, career educators, counselor educators, working uh, specifically uh, in training new counselors that will special, specialize in the field of career counseling, or individuals who work as clinical supervisors and provide that supervision to career counselors and other practitioners providing career services. So looking at what role you play and um, um, how that fits in one of these areas will help you make the choice about the appropriate career, uh, excuse me, current, sorry, for the appropriate credential, NCDA credential for you and your career path and how that can contribute to your personal brand in the work that you do each day. Wendy, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. Uh, I know that the information is um, somewhat complicated and that's why we've got the multiple pages of content on the NCDA website under the, the credentialing um, pages on NCDA, um, but this offers us uh, an overview of the six credentials and essentially uh, the roles that uh, individuals might be playing uh, who are pursuing these types of credentials. So thank you very much for that. Uh, James, why don't you uh, speak to these collective stories because uh, as James served as uh, the commissioner representing the Certified Career Counselor credential, uh, he probably has answered <laughs> the majority of questions that have come up regarding uh, credentialing. So, um, he, you know, he is well versed in uh, addressing these stories. Thanks, John. I'm just making sure I'm off mute. So, uh, again, this is, I'm James Westhoff. Um, you know, why did, why did we choose to get credentialed ourselves? I, I'd like to speak to that a little bit in my case. Um, I've been in the field, I work in a career center, I'm a director of a career center, and I just felt, even though I've been doing this for 20 years, I still wanting to, wanted something behind my name to show that I have the, have done an assessment that says, you are a professional in this field. And I think it's helped me tremendously. Um, the people that I've talked to in, in uh, going for the certified career counselor, um, again, they felt it was very important to have a credential behind their name so they could go to their bosses and say, I've done this assessment and I've proved my ability to do this work and and the same way with their clients um so i i hear that a lot from individuals and james um, you have um you are one of those people that comes from a unique counseling educational program speak to that sure yeah i am um, i went to colorado state university which has one of the career, career development programs in the country there's um actually very few of them um and it is a KCREP accredited program. So you go through coursework. So for the CCC, there's certain coursework that you have had to take um, to qualify for the, the credential. And um, so I hope I'm answering your question, John. Yeah, it's just that you, you, you graduated from one of those KCREP accrued programs in career counseling, yet upon graduation, you really only had one, well, you had two choices, right? You could, you could pursue the National Certified Counselor, you could pursue state um, licensure, but that was essentially, you know, the only options for you uh, as you were functioning as a career counselor. And now with the CCC credential, this opens up um, a whole new opportunity to support your brand and, and promote your uh, right. Very uh, credible background in career counseling. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so that's why I believe in this, and I think the benefits have been tremendous as well. And these are some of the comments from folks. I won't read these word for word, 
but comments from people that have uh, completed their um, uh, credentials. Um, and you do have to get um, recommendations from your peers as part of the process. Um, so, uh, so you can, again, prove the work that you've been doing. Um, yeah, I think we're seeing um, an increase in uh, the number of individuals who are um, coming into the professional career development, the field of career development, who are seeing uh, these credentials as a nice opportunity to uh, support their brand and their role in career development. So these these new individuals, whether they are retraining for career development and, and career development is their, their second act or they are uh, younger and they are coming out of academic programs and training programs uh, and choosing an NCBA credential, um, <clears throat> we, we are very pleased that you know, our credentialing program now offers them this formal recognition of their, their work and their commitment and ultimately uh, the goal of serving as a professional in the career development field. And I know I've been contacted by people you know, on LinkedIn saying, what is that CCC behind your name? And then they start learning about it and, they, and actually a few people have gone for it because of that. So um, I think, uh, I think it's becoming very established and, and I think it can, we're moving the field forward, which I think is incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, we, we have been able to kind of stake our claim um, as career development uh, practitioners and professionals uh, and say that, you know, our training, our experience, our education uh, matters uh, as it uh, supports our work in the field of career development and therefore these credentials really um, allow us to promote uh, that uh, that background and the strength of our background to uh, the public, potential clients, students, and our peers. Um, I mentioned briefly early on in the presentation that uh, NCBA ran a survey and this survey was meant for uh, the NCDA members who have not yet earned an NCDA credential. We wanted, at the commission, we wanted to get more feedback from our members in terms of what additional information, uh, guidance, support, uh, they may feel is needed for them to, uh, you know, kind of, Pull the trigger and pursue a credential. So I just want to comment on some of the themes that came out of uh, the survey, uh, some of the comments. Um, we did have several grandfathering periods for the certified career counselor uh, credential, individuals who had <clears throat> uh, earned the national board certified career counselor credential uh, back in the 90s when that was available. Uh, we offer those individuals the opportunity to fast track directly to the CCC, that uh, National uh, Board Certified Career Counselor credential had been uh, retired uh, at the end of uh, the 90s, but uh, individuals had the opportunity to still maintain their credential by uh, continuing their their, um, their activity in the field and with ongoing continuing education activity. So there was a fast track for the CCC. Um, there was also a, an extensive fast track. I believe we took it out to about 18 months for the certified career services provider. And this was to offer individuals who had uh, who have an active global career development facilitator credential through the Center for Credentialing Education. If you had a current GCDF, you had the opportunity to also fast track 
to earn the CCSP. So again, that was about 18 months that we kept that fast track open. Um, so we've tried to offer opportunities um, for individuals to kind of cross over to our credentials if they already had a formal competency-based credential in hand. Um, again, we feel that the pricing structure of our credentials is very competitive when we look at the cost of certifications from many of our cousin organizations that touch upon the career development field. Um, you keep hearing us uh, emphasize the phrase competency base, and that is so important uh, because we did not want to simply provide a designation as we did in the past. We wanted to supply a credential that can be earned and individuals can have confidence in uh, to support their background and their brand. So rather than um, offering a multiple choice exam, which essentially um, measures your ability to memorize and recall information, we chose the uh, scenario or case study based approach with our, our assessments. So this offers the applicant the opportunity to communicate through the written assessments how they would handle a particular situation or scenario, a particular client or student scenario um, in their daily work. Um, several of our credentials bridge off of the NCDA training opportunity. So if you were to complete the facilitating career development training program, you have opportunities to then pursue a credential with that FCD um, certificate. <clears throat> we also have uh, the uh, supervisor training, the, the um, clinical supervisor in career counseling, and that training has been offered for many years at uh, our global conference and at the professional development institutes. So completing the supervisor training program allows you to immediately bridge into the uh, certified clinical supervisor of career counseling credential. And again, our newest credential, the certified school career development advisor, um, that is an extension of completing the School Career Development Advisor Training Program, which is our newest program, which is now available um, through NCDA. So if you look under the training uh, tab on the NCDA website, you'll see uh, that we have expanded our training opportunities. Um, we've had questions, ongoing questions about the Global Career Development Facilitator. Um, the, the CCSP, the Certified Career Services Provider, is not anything that replaces uh, another credential. Um, the Global Career Development Facilitator is not an NCDA credential. It is a credential offered by the Center for Credentialing and Education, CCE Inc., um, and the Certified Career Services Provider credential through NCEA is another option for individuals to pursue. So if you complete the facilitating career development uh, training offered by an NCDA uh, United States NCBA uh, instructor, um, you are then eligible to pursue either the Global Career Development Facilitator or the Certified Career Services Provider or both, if you wish. Um, we will continue to develop and offer more information, informational material, and continue to enhance our study guides and also start offering some webinars that uh, will serve as preparation for the application and assessment process. So we're aware of the ongoing questions and the asks for those additional preparation materials, and we will be working on those the latter part of 2020. Um, and as we've also mentioned in the presentation, with the second edition of the Continuing Education Manual that is now on the NCDA website, 
Um, we hope that individuals will see that we have been very inclusive uh, in terms of the types of activities and the types of um, organizations that are offering activities, uh, continuing education activities that will count towards those 30 continuing education credit hours that an individual will need uh, across three years to renew their credential. Well, those were some of the kind of the overall themes that came out of that survey, and we're so grateful that uh, many of uh, the individuals in our membership <clears throat> were gracious enough to respond to our survey and offer their feedback. It's been very helpful. And I, I, I'd just like to say real quick, John, as well, um, don't hesitate to reach out to any of the commissioners that are on the Credential Commission um, if you have particular questions. There's a plethora of information on the NCDA website for the credentialing initiative and how you can choose a credential and such. So you should definitely refer to that first. But if there's additional questions that, or you, if you're concerned or need support in any way, don't hesitate to reach out to any of the commissioners with your questions or concerns. Thank you, James. Um, and again, here is the, uh, the, the specific URL to get to the credentialing pages on the NCDA website. Again, if you're on the main website, you can just click on the, uh, the credentialing tab. Um, Aaron Lesson is the director of the Credentialing Commission and his uh, email is listed uh, on the credentialing pages. If you click on the Credentialing Commission tab, you'll see uh, the current membership of the Credentialing Commission. So again, uh, myself, John Long, um, James Westoff, uh, Wendy Wilson, uh, Jessica um, and Deborah Rudell, and Dr. Tina Engtel. Uh, these are the current members of the Credentialing Commission. Um, and we are happy to address any questions or concerns if you wish to uh, contact us directly or you wish to just uh, process your question uh, through home office or through uh, uh, Aaron Lesson uh, through his NCDA webmail. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to present uh, at the NCDA uh, uh, virtual global conference for 2020. Uh, this has been an exciting time as we move into our fourth year of operations as a formal credential commission. And uh, we're very uh, pleased to see the support that, uh, that, that has been offered by our membership and by the NCDA Board of Directors. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.